Senator Capito. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, uh, and thank the witnesses here. I've learned a lot about something I didn't know a whole lot about, so I really appreciate, as Senator Inhofe said. Uh, Commissioner Leonhardt, let me ask you, in your testimony, you talked about how you have the captive in the wild and your um, um, area of um, um, expertise or, or where you're uh, in charge is in the captive deer, and that you, that you test every captive deer for, uh, for meat for CWD. Is that correct? Uh, yes, Senator. We every deer that goes to slaughter for meat, okay. we take a sample for, and before the meat can be consumed, right. that sample is tested to make sure it's safe right. for human consumption. Okay. On the hunting side, we only test ten percent. Yeah. How do they determine what those ten percent are? Do you know? It's random. Is it they, random or voluntary? Yeah. Or it's, it's voluntary. Does it take two to three weeks for the test to come back? Is no. Uh, Mr. No. What, I mean, can you get it done in a couple of days? Or I believe that's the case. Um, well, um, so do you have a lot of, uh, I mean, is that a, a, a unique model to West Virginia or do other states like Wyoming and others have sort of a bifurcated system depending on how they uh, oversee their herds? I, I really don't have a good answer. I can get that information okay. for you, Senator. I will say that West Virginia is actually uh, looking to other states that have captive herds, and we're starting to develop our emergency action plan. Mm -hmm. Should we find a case of CWD mm -hmm. uh, within uh, a captive herd, just like we do, whether it be avian influenza for our poultry or whether another disease uh, comes into our livestock industry, uh, we are developing an emergency action plan for chronic wasting disease in captive servants. Uh, and then we'll tabletop that exercise to make sure all agencies are involved. Thank you. Um, I know that your lab, that you've worked a lot to try to modernize the lab uh, at, the, at the state uh, agriculture lab. And, I, and we also have a national, a federal USDA lab in the Eastern Panhandle as well. So I think West Virginia could pay, pay, play a, um, a, a big role in um, uh, better research and development such as what's, uh, uh, what's desired in this bill. Um, let me ask you, in terms of um, the hunting issue, uh, the public perceptions, and Mr. Fosberg sort of got into this a little bit. Honestly, I, I can't even think in West Virginia that I've actually seen a public service announcement or some kind of warning or a, a whole lot of talk. We're a big hunting state. Uh, are these kinds of things going on, or is it just sort of left to the DNR and to the ag to, 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 to inform the, the hunter or the uh, domestic deer uh, owner population? How, how does that information get out? I, I believe the DNR publishes it in their hunting regs. So when somebody goes to look up the deer hunting regs for this year, they'll see a, a blurb on chronic wasting disease in there. Is that, Mr. Fosberg, do you have something to add on that? Yeah, you know, it's a, I think most of the states to give that same warning in their regs on CWD, particularly the ones that have it. But there's also a fine line between, you know, raising awareness about it and panicking people. Right. You see a bunch of these articles about zombie deer and things like that, and, you know, I get scared, and I eat a lot of deer. Right. And uh, so I think that what we're trying to do is, you know, have a responsible approach to have people understand what it is. There is a way we can fight it. It's not the end of the world right now. Um, but it's also, you know, it's, you, we've got to take this seriously. Yeah. Mr. Nesmick, do you have a different perspective on that from your state? No, I, I share that. Per I, I think Mr. Forsbro um, outlined that very well as far as the concern and not, you know, not overreacting to the way that this is messaged to the public. But we do the similar efforts. We message this. And we've, that's been the focus of, uh, as I mentioned in my oral testimony, this citizen working group that we formed recently was to increase awareness across the state just so folks understand what it is and what the potential implications are and 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 you know in, in response to one of your questions to the commissioner um, we do a three-pronged approach to testing so we have our folks um, agency folks target surveillance um, specific animals so if they see a, an animal that looks like it's exhibiting clinical symptoms of the disease they'll remove that animal so it can be tested and then we also um, hunters can voluntarily submit their sample if they wish to have it tested, and that typically the turn is about two weeks. And then we also set up um, surveillance check stations where we ask hunters to let us take a sample as they're leaving the field with their harvested animals. Well, I mean, I would really encourage uh, the more professionalization as we look at this, we're realizing that it's been, like I'm Senator Anahoff, I didn't realize it's been around as long as it has. You can see the spread of it, and 
I'm sure Oklahoma, like we said, if it doesn't have it, it's going to get it. It's almost an inevitability, especially if you're close regionally. But what I think is really interesting for from the CDC's perspective and from the perspective of animal health, a lot of these um, research um, uh, entities, you know, there's cross pollinization of information. I mean, we may learn something as we do a deeper dive into chronic wasting disease that could actually help us you know, with other diseases that are, are human-borne diseases. And so I think, uh, I think the support at the federal level for that type of um, sharing of information and research I think is exceedingly important. So thank you for what you're doing. And, and thanks again, Commissioner, for being here.